A lot of times as NFL fans, we can get caught up in the big name guys on our team, the more popular guys, the star players that are on our team. But what about the guys that uh, seem to be flying under the radar? Because everybody has an impact on the Baltimore Ravens one way or another. And this question that we got from my guy, Marco, um, it brought out some guys that have really been flying under the radar and haven't been being talked about enough as far as what they could possibly do uh, for the Ravens this upcoming season. Uh, and the two guys that he brought up were Malik Harrison and Jalen Ferguson. And he said, uh, what do you think the Ravens plan on doing with them? I, I think if we're not going to utilize them, might as well trade or cut them. What are your thoughts? So, uh, going one by one with Malik Harrison, um, I was thinking, I remember when him and Patrick Queen got drafted, uh, it was looking like they were going to be a nice little one-two combo. And there's still that possibility because uh, Patrick Queen is obviously still around, Malik Harrison is still around, um, and the only linebacker they brought in, they did sign Vince Beagle the other day, but they, brought, they only kept uh, Josh Bynes around, and we know Josh Bynes is not uh, their future at the linebacker position. Um, I'm sure they still hope that that's Patrick Queen, even though uh, you know they're not completely sold on him. And Patrick Queen, he's had some bad, but he's had a lot of good, too. Uh, it's been a good mix of both. But they still haven't quite found that guy to, to, to pair with him. And we know in today's NFL, there's a lot of safeties playing at linebacker anyway, so you don't necessarily need a one-two punch at linebacker, but it would be a nice option uh, to have. Uh, so with Malik Harrison... Uh, he's shown some flashes here and there uh, of how good he can be. And he's also shown some inexperience because he hasn't been out there too much. Um, but the Ravens, I feel like with him, they're going to be doing some experimenting this year. And John Harbaugh talked about it uh, earlier this offseason with Malik Harrison. Uh, he talked about how they'll play him at both inside and outside linebacker and really see uh, how he does at each. Um, and I think that's important because we got to look at the, the context of the Ravens situation right now. Uh, the Ravens have uh, Tyus Bowser, uh, who's an outside linebacker, sort of edge guy, uh, but he's coming back from an Achilles injury. You don't want to rush him. They drafted David Ajabo, uh, who's an outside linebacker, edge guy, but he's coming back from an Achilles injury, so you don't want to rush him. They lost out on uh, Pernell McPhee, who's an edge guy, so he's not coming back, so you ain't got nobody to rush. But that, that spot uh, is very vacant right now as sort of outside linebacker, edge guy. Uh, and you need somebody who can play that. And then, of course, at inside linebacker, too, uh, with Patrick Queen being there and Josh Bynes being there, uh, it's always nice to have depth because, like we always say, stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. And if you have some guys that are ready at that position that can come in, that can step in, uh, and that can show out, then it's always better to be overprepared than underprepared. Uh, and we've seen the Ravens be on both sides of the fence when it comes to that. Uh, so with Malik Harrison, um, I don't think that he's going to be traded or anything like that. Uh, I think that the Ravens, that they'll keep him around. I think they'll keep him around for depth. Um, he's, his contract is super cheap. What was he, like a fourth round pick in 2020, I believe? Um, but they'll keep him around because they love that versatility too. Now, I don't believe we've seen him on special teams but i'm not 100 percent sure about that but if he does play special teams and if he can play special teams that would just be an added bonus uh to his resume uh, and another reason why they would keep him around now um on the flip side oh you know what maybe malik harrison was a third round pick in 2020 but either way um i don't think malik harrison is going anywhere but now on the flip side well not on the flip side because we're still talking about defense uh jalen ferguson a lot of the same reasons um, that I could see them keeping Malik Harrison around. Uh, Jalen Ferguson, now that's, that's where it gets even trickier. Uh, because with Jalen Ferguson, um, he's in a position where he could have a lot more opportunity. Uh, we already talked about Pernell McPhee departing. Uh, but also Derek Wolf. Derek Wolf is still obviously on the team. But Derek Wolf is coming back from injury. And Derek Wolf has been injured a lot. Uh, so with that uncertainty that you have with a Derek Wolf and how his body's going to hold up, I think he just had not back surgery. He just had hip surgery. That's what it was. He recently had hip surgery. So you, of course, hopeful for recovery. Um, you brought on coaches that specialize in recovery from injury. Um, but with Derek Wolf, you just you don't know what to expect. So, again, with Jalen Ferguson, 
he really has to take advantage of this opportunity again. Stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. With Jalen Ferguson, a.k.a. Sack Daddy, uh, we haven't gotten to see that yet. But is it because that, that he just, NFL has just been so tough for him? Or is it because he hasn't been used the correct way? Well, hopefully, we'll get to see that this season. Now, I know he's going to have a, a significant amount of guys in front of him. But still, uh, we want to see him, at least in the preseason, too. Maybe in a preseason, we could see him show some possible flashes or whatnot, some possible, okay, let's go. There you go, Jalen Ferguson. Okay, earn that name, sack daddy in NFL. Let's go. Hopefully, we can see some of that on a uh, professional level, but we haven't yet uh, for whatever reason it may be. Uh, but this is a, a huge season uh, for, for Jalen Ferguson because, what was he, a, a third-round pick in 2019? And I remember just hearing about, oh, yeah, he broke Terrell Suggs' uh, sack record in college. I'm thinking, okay, let's go. But we just haven't seen anything since. Nothing. So uh, it, it's been an unfortunate start to his career, but the fortunate part for him is that it's not the end of his career. He still has an opportunity when he does get his opportunity to really try to make the most of it. So this is a crucial year for him. He, I feel like there's a lot of pressure on him to really show out and perform. Now with the Ravens, they, I feel like they need to make sure he is not an outside linebacker. He is a defensive end. That hand should be in the dirt, on the ground. He should not be dropping back. Just my opinion, though. I'm no professional. But I don't think he should. I don't think having him drop back would be putting him in the best position to succeed. Um, it's important that he's like an edge setting guy. Cause we saw some flashes here and there. We saw a couple flashes here and there, but we just haven't gotten to see a consistent body of work from Ferg yet. So maybe with opportunities, especially with guys being gone and guys coming back from injury, maybe this could be a year where it's like, okay. That's what we've been uh, waiting on. Now, he also said with Jarvis Landry going to the Saints and the remaining free agent wide receivers not being what they used to be. I mean, even before Jarvis Landry went to the Saints, it, it was slim pickings out there wide receiver. Uh, but he said, what do you think about trading Chuck Clark to the Giants for Darius Slayton or Kadarius Tony and a fourth round pick? Now, that uh, has been a, a lot of people's trade scenario, especially with Wink being over there. Chuck Clark played under Wink's system, and he'll be just reuniting with Wink again. Um, a lot of people have been talking about that one. Trading for Darius Slayton or Kadarius Toney uh, and receiving a fourth-round pick as well. Uh, they could do that, but in my does that really put them over the top? If you're looking at Ravens receiver room right now, Rashad Bateman, James Prochet, Devin DuVernay, um, Tylen Wallace, Benjamin Victor, undrafted rookie free agents, does a Darius Slayton or Kadarius Tony put them over the top? Does that move the needle that much to where it's like, all right, these boys are Super Bowl contenders? If it does for you, okay, you make the trade. But if it doesn't, I don't see why you do it. 